All right. Um, so uh, the topic for today's presentation is different from the one last night. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we uh, like this year. What we did basically, we looked a little bit into uh, uh, social network data sets, and like I think end of last year, this year was like very busy politically. We've seen quite a few interesting events, and I think that's actually very useful when you when you want to do like some data flow studies because like they trigger. Uh, interesting stories and um, let's see if it works All right so and this presentation basically covers some of our findings some of the ideas that we like looking into and we also hope to collect feedback because I think it's not only us who is looking into this I think uh, we, we just happen to have access to some interesting data sets so a quick thing about us like as of this year we uh, joined this team in Trimicro, this is funky logo. Uh, it's, it reads FTR, and we just do some, some research. So, um, the world politics in a nutshell. Is anyone here from London? Have you seen these ads in, in uh, London subway? I think that's a very nice one. It's, uh, I think what happens basically like last year and this year, uh, the world gets more and more polarized, and there, there is a lot of false information and false claims of spreading false information. So, uh, and I think that basically reflects this. Um, see if it, so uh, we mainly focus on Twitter data in this talk because we have access to daily full like Twitter dumps uh, in Trimicro. Uh, and the, the story that goes back to why we have access to the Twitter dumps there was a competition on Twitter on uh, for bot detection, and uh, Tremicro participated, and I think they got something like 10%, but everyone else got like 2% success rate. So uh, as a price, like uh, Twitter agreed to share the daily dumps with, uh, with the company, and uh, we just happened to be able to play with that. So uh, I think uh, last night uh, in Bar War, very interesting T-shirt that basically uh, uh, reflects the core of our presentation. The whole, uh, the whole point of us, like looking into Twitter data, we want to know whether the stuff that we were looking into were there were humans or bots, and uh, we came up with some uh, techniques to answer those questions. So, uh, and we are here at Haklu, right? And Haklu also had, had imprint on on Twitter. I don't know how many of you like trying to search for. Haklu hashtag and see what's what's going on on Twitter, yeah? Have you seen that aside from like the main communication that people like chat about, like presentations and what's not, there's some, also some dodgy stuff going on on Twitter and they like use Haklu hashtags. Have you seen this? Uh, this is just the first day, because uh, like uh, it takes some time to, to run the query, but this is like the first day of, of Haklu. And we, we just uh, start looking a little bit into this and um, See, oops. So th this is basically the main community, and I think most of you can probably see your your Twitter handles here. If you and uh, you can see who is like who who is like the most popular or the most talkative here, or like being uh, frequently retweeted and stuff. But there are some people who like uh, I don't know. Do you recognize these guys? Are, are they here? I don't know. I, I I did not see them, but they also like uh, uh, tweet about. Uh, <laughs> Haklu, and when, when you notice what, what, what they tweet about is actually uh, quite interesting. So they tweet like stuff like this. Uh, may, maybe this is important for a, for a conference. But what what we realized, I think, I think Haklu is just one of like hundreds of events that happen right now in October, like uh, so, like in this region. And if you go to uh, there are some websites which provide which hashtags are popular, and you can see that Haklu. Yesterday, I think it was on like the, the 34th most popular like tag. I think what they do, they probably just scrap uh, like sites like this and pick up popular hashtags, and they just combine them to to spread this stuff. Accounts like this, this is not real CNN, even though it, it has the CNN logo, and they just bulk like create them. And this, those accounts normally live like a day or two just to distribute stuff. Sometimes there would be like spam. The picture 
on, on, the, on the Twitter post does not actually reflect the content. The content might be an exploit kit, uh, it could be attempt to sell you some pharma, like it, it's de depending who their customers. So I think it's all just run by uh, Twitter bot operators, but it's an interesting thing that you see when you start poking around Twitter that like a lot of stuff that happens on Twitter is not, is not that uh, straightforward and a lot of people actually doing business on it and this is just like a reflection of, of their business model, I think. And so uh, we, we call this thing hashtag writing because they just pick up popular hashtags and, and try to use them. So uh, who, who can read this word? <laughs> Previet, yeah. It, it, uh, this is, uh, yeah, just, just, just a meme. But um, so uh, just a quick summary of what we've been trying to find in this study. So uh, looking into social interactions in slice of like particular social events. So we, we, we pick up a few which I think were uh, quite significant on uh, Twitter this year. So there was a Manchester bombing. Uh, we have a list of them. There was a French election. And, and we'll just look at things that I think are kind of interesting uh, to see. Uh, and we uh, present our findings in form of, we actually like wrote a paper on this as well. And we, we, tr we were trying to link what we've seen on Twitter to the actual offerings in, in underground to see if we can uh, find links between them. So a quick agenda. Uh, Vladimir uh, has been re uh, reading some uh, KGB books and he found that uh, the stuff that we find on Twitter actually matches some of the uh, 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 methods that uh, are proposed in some of the older, like I think the books are from 1980s, 1990s on uh, social control and stuff. And a lot of stuff that you see on Twitter actually reflects what, what is uh, explained in the book. So we have a section where Vlad will just explain uh, what he found in the books. And then uh, we'll go through like discoveries of on social networks as a slice uh, on each particular social event. And then we'll also briefly look into the actual ecosystem. Like, if you had some money and you want to run similar campaigns, what you can find on, uh, or what services are available for you. So uh, we picked up a few interesting events. Coffee fee is a new word of 2017, right? I think it's a, a new invention by uh, this uh, very smart guy who tweets uh, a lot on Twitter. Then um, uh, there was a Macron leak uh, when like, just some data was dumped just before uh, election in France. And I think that was also interesting uh, in particular to see how it was uh, manipulated on, on Twitter. Manchester bombing was, uh, well, the event itself is sad, but what you see on Twitter, what, the things that are going on are very interesting uh, in terms of uh, studies. So, and there were, there were a few uh, more recent events like uh, NFL uh, scandal on Twitter and like blames that uh, it was uh, affiliated with Russian bots, which possibly is true. We actually found a guy who said he's not a Russian bot. And um, yeah, and a few others. <coughs> so uh, Vlad will go through the introduction. Okay, so like uh, when we started on the project uh, internally called uh, like fake news, uh, we found a pretty interesting video on the YouTube uh, uh, which called like lectures at FSB which is like uh, the same agency as KGB in USSR and uh, we found a lot of fundamental research uh, which has been done like decades ago in different countries and we will uh, walk uh, through this kind of research. So this is like a fancy picture, but uh, it tells like how to rule the world. So which options do you have uh, depending on time, uh, depending on the power of you need, uh, like or on, on the long lasting results. So we have like six priorities of management and the lower you go, the easier you can reach your goal. Uh, so like the lower axis, it's a war. The next uh, level is uh, like uh, drugs and alcohol. 
And uh, the third level, it's money. So this is like a material stuff. And uh, everything up to this, like the uh, next four le three levels, are non-material stuff. So money is here, and infowar is like here. So this is propaganda stuff. And this is money. So if you have a lot of money, if you have a lot of money, you can do it faster when with propaganda. But this picture says that uh, the result won't be long lasting as for propaganda. And uh, like for the upper levels, it's like uh, things like uh, rewriting the history. It's like uh, manipulation uh, about like Nashi and something. So somebody promote them, somebody blame them. So and depending on the country and generation, like. Uh, uh, people do it. So it, it, it have to take quite a long time to reach results, but uh, the results will be like very long lasting. <coughs> so another interesting thing it called time law. So what it said, like uh, if you see uh, like uh, the generation changes, uh, it's around like 25 years. And here you can see technology changes. So like uh, before, like uh, previous century, the speed of change the technologies was sl slower when change the generations. And if you read it like uh, from the other side, that means that uh, your grandmother, your father, and your parents can give you and share your experience about the topic which has been developed before. What happened now, like uh, the speed of technology change is faster than generation. So like uh, nobody can use uh, experience from previous generation just to make a decision. And with, with the thing that opened like a wide landscape for public opinion manipulation. Would you like to comment on this? So it's like the slide we, what we spotted uh, on the... And you can also find a video actually on YouTube, like uh, there is a guy like teaching a lesson. Uh, and you can see this actually in, in many situations if you, if you carefully look at it. Like for example, the, the, uh, like the Polish, uh, the recent Polish banking uh, incident where the actor is Lazarus. If, if you analyze the artifacts which were used by different security companies to attribute it to either like North Korea or like some Russian operations or a group of like banking experts possibly hired by North Koreans. You can see more or less the same thing. So, uh, so this is a it, truth. What people so to if you hide. want to hi to hide a truth, yeah. you create multiple versions of lie with diff different difficulty of discovering the lies. So every every person who looks at the story and they try to recover artifacts in order to understand what the truth is, like who is the actual actor behind Lazarus, for example, uh, they discover artifacts uh, at the depth of their skills. So like some people just look at the string, some people will look into uh, binary sections code and find like pointers to, to Korean language, right? And then, uh, and then they stop at this because they're like, hey, I'm smarter than this guy because he, he did not find that I found. And that makes me think that my version of truth is accurate. But in fact, I think they basically all go uh, on misleading passes. And the person who created the story, they just create multiple versions of truth with difficult, dif of lies. multiple versions of lies with dif different difficulties of discovering them. So, and the, the level of discovering the, the, the lie is, uh, should be satisfactory to your skills. So uh, another thing that uh, this theory says, it's like uh, if you want to handle any object to do it comfortable, you have uh, the, the object behavior should be predictable. So as long as an object could be a country, a company, a political party, or anything. So as long as behavior is predictable, it is easy, easy to handle uh, object. And like uh, with the thing we see uh, during a lot of revolution during last years. Uh, so like uh, before initiated revolution, we see the street protests. So it's the way people uh, force uh, 
uh, the behavior of the country is like uh, unpredictable. So, and as long as unpredictable, like the government have to spend more and more resources to handle the situation. And in this case, it's easy to switch like to another like a trajectory or to another like uh, a party or president or anything else. So what's the, the thing what uh, means like manageability property from uh, these guys? Uh, and our thing, it's like maturity of the crowds. So it's like uh, in many societies, people accept anything we see on TV, and in our societies, we don't. So for example, in Russia, uh, for quite a long time in the 90s, so we saw a lot of stuff which we accept, but later we found out it was a bullshit. <laughs> so like Russians didn't accept uh, like uh, anything, and we question more. Yeah, so, so like uh, the way how to handle this kind of crowds, it's not about uh, fake news, it's about uh, biasing uh, like the priorities. And here we can see research uh, how Russia today highlighted, I think like Brexit vote, or elections in UK. So one of the candidates uh, like uh, has been highlighted like um, and with uh, positive, uh, neutral, and negative comments at the same volume, and an hour was like mostly uh, uh, positive. They, they an analyzed the media press on two different candidates uh, from the uh, viewpoint of like emotions that it gives you when you read the, the post. So, uh, and you can see that for Cameron, it was 50 50 like uh, neutral posts uh, vs. Uh, negative. vs. negative, like when there were some critics, vs. The, uh, the other candidate, there was uh, mostly positive and neutral and very small amount of negative press. And this is how the like public opinion is formed. So, so if uh, people claim like, uh, about the fake news, it's not always fake, but it's often biased. It's just the color of the post. Like all the facts in the news could be true, but it's a freedom of journalists to give different color to what they write. And that's how we believe it, it is exploited. That's why there was a lot of speculation about like fake news. But the thing is, it's not really the fake news that is fake. It's the, the feeling that uh, you get after reading particular post. There were a number of uh, our research related to the topic, and uh, like one of the things, it's called bandwagon effect. So generally, like uh, the more people accept something, uh, the more our people will accept the same thing despite the facts we have. Uh, uh, and our research, it's like uh, called like spiral of silence. So people often like silently accept instead of uh, like uh, climb something. And uh, another like a side effect called like, la last uh, the last minute swing effect, like uh, when people during election change your opinion during the last 24 hours, uh, despite uh, the exit polls that happened like uh, two or three days uh, before. Uh, we found like uh, an institute that called Albert Einstein Institution. And if you read Wikipedia article, like uh, it claims that uh, the post uh, from this uh, institution has been used uh, at the number of color revolutions uh, and ex ussr countries and uh, other countries, like to organize protects, protests. So, and uh, of course, like uh, if you Google for something like uh, fake news, it's easy to spot uh, special sites which allow you to make uh, a fake news like, like a, as a constructor. So you can download something and just make your own, roll your own fake news. Uh, so uh, let's look on the social networks. So like uh, now, like people uh, rarely have opinion on any topic and we uh, use internet just to get impression from our people and this kind of decisions made like for products uh, like online shopping like and even for political decision or investment so here like uh, uh, the Shanghai Stock Exchange like a drop uh, after some fake news and we, we also uh, did poke around uh, Twitter a little bit a lot of fake news or like uh, fabricated facts that you find on Twitter actually are not politically related, they mostly run finance. And you will see that uh, 
th there are schemes, like known schemes called pump and dump, which were widely used in spamming. So uh, basically, uh, uh, what, people, what people basically were doing, buying stocks from less known company, start a spam campaign, like mass spam campaign, uh, wait until the, the price for the stock goes up a little bit, dump what they had, and uh, get the money in the stock. So basically, after the spam campaign, the price of the stock will return to the, its like more or less like original value, and th they get away with money. So what we notice that on Twitter, you basically see the same thing, and uh, you can cross correlate people posting uh, like through bots on particular companies to the to the curves on, on uh, for this particular company on the stock market. Uh, so now we will briefly overview what's available uh, on the social networks. So one of the terms is called publics. It's like uh, groups in the social networks like Facebook, uh, like uh, VK in Russia. And here is the site which allow you to buy this kind of group. You can see a number of people in the group. You can choose like a political topic like a computers, music, and any like religion or advertisement. And you can buy a group in the social network with like uh, 100,000 people. And here's the price, it's around like uh, 500 euros. So, so they basically create groups on social networks, they pump them up so they get like real people in the group, they promote them, they like invite people. Uh, all the groups are shaped in towards certain political agenda and then they sell this group so you can use them for your own so, so people can buy this group and leverage uh, for your own task. So, oops. So Telegram become more and more important thing because uh, like a Telegram channels, it's like underground forums like three or five years ago. So found a lot of uh, channels on the Telegram which are more valuable than uh, analysis of dark web because everything is available there and you don't need to be, uh, to have like a special access or to bet on something. And Russia started, I think the reason why we see a spike of Telegram channels and a lot of and both underground stuff and uh, like the political opposition moving to Telegram is because in Russia they start clamping down on uh, like lots of other messengers. Like I think Line right now is not available within Russia. Uh, like so some of the other messengers uh, where they did not agree to share data uh, they basically f filter it out on country level. And you can see a lot of activities start moving towards Telegram. A lot of people who think they are anti-government or anti-state or anarchist kind of types, they go to Telegram to search for groups that suit their political agenda. But what they don't realize is that some of those groups, they basically also uh, tradable good. Like someone basically creates a, gr a group, promotes it to get enough people, and then sells it to other people who want to start... Uh, building certain political agenda. So like, uh, and the same situation for any mm -hmm. our uh, like a social network. So for example, here like a software to post uh, at f uh, on Facebook, on VK and our site like to automatically promote your messages among the many, many accounts. And the funny thing about this is uh, a lot of other like CEO is kind of not very legal, but this, this area is gray, so there is no law that says you're not allowed to bullshit people, right? So uh, that's why a lot of companies which provide the services, they don't try to hide. They, you can find their address, you can find their phone number, you can actually call them and ask for a price list. Oh, yeah, and bots is a really buzzword, but what happened now in Russia, where is the stock exchange for likes uh, and all this kind of promotion and you can choose like you need like uh, to do your burst with bots or with leaf people because like many people have small businesses and they want to promote their online shops so we exchange their likes and comments like a human uh, written comments on the other side uh, to get uh, positive feedback on their own side. So generally, like, uh, it's pretty easy to get uh, real comments, uh, real likes from real people instead of bots as generally people think uh, like what merely happened. And I think that's where actually Twitter has a hard time because for Twitter, 
they have this uh, binary problem, bot or not bot, right? So for, for uh, like real humans, they supposed to let them like continue using the accounts, for bots they're supposed to block them. But what you realize that, in fact, what the accounts that you see on Twitter, which are being used to manipulate, uh, like repost, retweets, they, they're kind of bots, but they're actually controlled by real humans. So it could be like one person controls like thousand accounts. So, and they make them appear as like, it's a regular person posting. And that, that what makes Twitter job very hard. Like if, if they block this guy, then uh, this guy would go and complain, hey, you, you blocked my like real Twitter account. But if they don't block, they don't block actual bots. Yeah, so, and uh, the same market available not only in Russia, but uh, on English speaking, Arabic speaking, and Chinese speaking communities. So, but uh, the thing we found like uh, in Russia, it's usually like twice cheaper when uh, in foreign countries. And if you look deeper into some of the Twitter applications that you find on App Store or uh, uh, like uh, Google Store, you will see that there are, there are uh, third-party Twitter applications that are supposed to provide you like better experience of using so social network. But what in fact they do, they do uh, identity theft. So they, they allow you to use some extra features like auto follow, auto blah, 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 but they will also convert your Twitter account into bot. So they will also be like posting stuff on your behalf, which you're not aware of. And I think this problem is not under radar right now, but this is like one of the ways how these guys get real human Twitter accounts. So very interesting service on the YouTube. So uh, we suggest you like for 6,000 euros, uh, put your video on the top five videos on the YouTube. So like you order these this services and your video will be like on the top of the YouTube uh, despite uh, the content of the video and it costs like just less than 10,000 euros. And like for Instagram, we're up to 1 million likes and it costs like 15 euros. So it's like uh, pre pre pretty easy to promote account, uh, accounts in many social networks. But the other thing we found, like the voting systems uh, like change.org are really abused uh, with uh, underground services. So who knows what change.org is? All right, uh, anyone else? So change.org is, is, yeah, is used to put petitions online and get people like vote for this and apparently like create, create some pressure on the government to like make changes. But in, what in fact, you can just go and buy uh, uh, voting services from uh, change.org. Like uh, here, the reason why we have the screenshot because there was a dispute between the guy who bought a service from uh, this company and, and the, the company owner. So this guy just posted like that he placed an order for certain petitions, number of upvotes on change.org. And yeah, so it's like, uh, you can see 20, the price, 20, how many votes he bought. Uh, and, votes. Uh, th th this were upvotes for to remove some politicians from like Russian government uh, unit. So, and like uh, you can buy even like Amazon reviews in China. Yeah, I think like a lot of people buy stuff on Amazon and like in order to, whether you like to make decision whether you want to buy or not particular thing, you usually read reviews, right? So, and have you like noticed that uh, the thing with those reviews is that some of them look a bit strange, like more or less automated. And that's actually true because there are portals where you can buy uh, reviews for only like 10 RMB per review and they give you five star review, either on Amazon, eBay, like anything. So you basically just pay money, get, get the thing done. And um, there was one guy here yesterday who works for a company that uh, helps these guys to like, once you sell stuff in Europe, like, uh, send money back to China. So I think this is like just part of the, the same ecosystem. So, um, but uh, yeah, let, let's uh, take a look at Twitter. So uh, Twitter is one of the hot uh, uh, commodities on in this market. It's, it's not the only one, it's just one of them. And uh, Twitter accounts which, with some history and particular social impact, they have value because you can start promoting your information and people trust those accounts. So th there are uh, websites like Twitter Stock where you can basically just go and uh, buy accounts with a high like cloud scores and uh, 
uh, use them. So, and here is one of the examples when, uh, like, um, the picture with lion has been used uh, on the Twitter post. So it's the same lion, but the Twitter post like uh, climbs very serious things. So where is, uh, here is like one of the cases where, when uh, like uh, fake fake news has been spotted. Yeah, um, and some of the approaches that we use, we actually have automated. Uh, bot detection on, on uh, Twitter data, and we look at the uh, account names, uh, account description, similarity between avatars, similarity between uh, uh, Twitter lines, uh, and look whether there are accounts which behave similarly, like they could be, they could have different settings, like different language names, different names, but they could repost more or less the same stuff in different uh, sequence. And, uh, uh, with Twitter data, you actually get timestamps when accounts were created, when posts were made, uh, so you can compare the time zone to the uh, uh, timestamp of tweets, whether like a normal person is supposed to be uh, awake at the time. And so we, we have scripts for this, uh, but uh, I think we'll skip through through this because uh, uh, we don't have much time. I want to show uh, findings. One other thing is that that we noticed there are a lot of media companies which also like post themselves as like social media companies as well. Uh, but what the, in fact they do, they ma maintain mal multiple Twitter accounts which trigger uh, false positives for us. But you know, also these companies, they do buy bots to promote their stuff. And we will see this on uh, some of the il illustrations. So this is uh, when Donald Trump posted his famous coffee fee post. That, that's what uh, his post looked like. So uh, that's Donald Trump. That's uh, a crowd of bots. So what we realized, there are lots of bots that just monitor uh, Donald Trump Twitter account, and when he posts, they they write on on, on the wave. So what they do, like uh, we found, like a number of uh, so, some of the bots. If you look into the description of the the source, like who posted, they actually say they bots, and we found like, lots of bots uh, source code online. And some of the bots, like if you get the source code, you, you actually get their credentials, so you can like get a copy and start posting on their behalf. But what is interesting, uh, they try to use publicity of Twitter's account to promote their accounts. So they, what they will do, will, they will other repost. Some of them will, will make some modifications to post. There was one which was interesting, uh, Trump Twitter spell check bot. So for every twi Twitter uh, Trump's post, they will run it through spell check. And if there was a spelling mistake, they will automatically like post. Oh yeah, there was a, a spelling mistake in uh, in in Trump's post. <laughs> that was funny, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but what is interesting that once you start slicing uh, the Twitter data, you will notice that. Uh, there would be a particular like Twitter users, and just have a group of followers who don't talk to anyone. And if you even like, if you look at it by eye, you can see a lot of the follower names. They seem to be like machine generated. There is like certain pattern, like combination of names, numbers, and that's basically a very typical pattern of like bot activity on uh, on Twitter. Uh, we have some scripts where we do like a bit of like community detection, so we try to break. Uh, uh, nodes communicating on Twitter into communities, and then we see just who uh, talks to whom. So uh, Macron's leak. So if you take the, uh, so we, we took the first few hours when uh, Macron leaks data was published, and I think what is actually interesting about the Macron leaks data was that they dumped the data just a day before, before the election, and as in any country with democracy, media is not supposed to communicate within certain amount of, like the local domestic media is, is not supposed to communicate or like post anything in regard to any of the supposed to be elected candidates. And I think they exploited this because the situation that, 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 that was created with Macron leaks was that no, into, no local media was allowed to comment on what was posted and it was open battlefield for external forces to basically manipulate people's opinion within the country. Because if you're outside of the of the France, you're not you're not supposed to follow the, this regulation, right? So they they can't even sue you. So and you can um, we we colored this graph by the language. So there is uh, half of it that uh, was mostly like uh, French speaking, and half of this which was uh, uh, English speaking. 
But if you start drilling down in, into some of the posts, uh, uh, yeah, this just uh, ranking on, on which posts within few, first few hours were like the most popular ones. And you will realize that the, the, there was a lot of abuse going on. There was some posts which uh, were like promoting tweets. There were some posts that were trying to promote their own agenda. There were, there were uh, some people realized that Macron leak was a hot topic and they were like just like selling stuff with the Macron leak uh, hashtag. And what is interesting when you look at the visualization is not the main crowd because this is like mostly, this is probably like uh, English speaking like uh, uh, socium, like a group of people who who were in, interested in in the leaks. This was the French speaking uh, socium that was interested in the leaks. But then, if you start looking into the small groups which did not talk to the the main core groups, I think those groups were like interesting for us, and we start zooming into them, and we realized that was unsuccessful attempts to promote uh, particular data. So this is one of the examples. I think. Uh, I'm not sure which. Um, I'm, I think it's it's one 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 of these clouds. But I'm not sure which one, but uh, it's one of the clouds that like we just uh, zoom in, and you will see this guy. Uh, he had a lot of friends. Those friends never talked to anyone else, and they were like talking about um, uh, Macron leaks. Uh, within the uh, the visualization shows the first hour when when Macron leak happened. So and what you will notice that a lot he has a lot of friends with uh, very strange logotypes and uh, uh, strange names as well. And what we realize we actually think this guy might be like real or fake. I'm not sure, but he has a lot of bot followers. And whenever he posts anything, those bot followers basically automatically retweet. This is within the first hour. This is the people who automatically retweet whatever he was commenting on on uh, Macron leaks. We found that some of the social identities, uh, this guy in particular, they use those political events to just uh, uh, promote their persona. Th this guy also, like, if you look at, we actually looked at this guy across different multiple, like, uh, social events this year, and with every event you see pattern like this. So there, there would be a, a, a group of people talking about certain social events, and then it, then it would be him talking, and he just has a, a group of followers who doesn't talk to anyone else. And if you look, he, he, uh, this, this is actually a real person, you can find his uh, interview online, and he poses himself as a political expert. But what in fact he does, he buys bots, and for every post that, well, not every, but in, uh, like the important post that he thinks he makes, he basically uh, buys the bot retweet service. And um, that was what was uh, strange that uh, the Macron leak uh, thing was like happening in France. It probably had impact on France. It probably had impact on some of the English speaking uh, people as well because the, uh, everyone was trying to find like a Russian trace in it. But uh, what you will notice that uh, some other uh, political figures, for example, this guy, I think he's from Turkey, uh, they were writing on the, on the same hashtag, retweeting some uh, Turkish political news with the, with the Macron leaks hashtag as well. And most of the followers that are here, uh, they were actually bots. What we realized, uh, well, we, we published this information with the uh, um, Twitter accounts as well, and, and we sent some of the data to Twitter. Twitter apparently is doing a very good job. We realized that some of those accounts, they got blocked within like two days after uh, this kind of abuse. But what you need to know is that all of those accounts are disposable. So they they create them, they leave for one or two days. Uh, uh, they're being used to promote certain events because once event is... So Twitter doesn't count, I think. Uh, number of retweets uh, of blocked accounts. But while the account is not blocked, if if certain post has a sig uh, significant number of retweets, it will still make it to the like popularity list. And I think that's basically the, the whole point of having this uh, disposable accounts. And if you look at some of the bots, you can see uh, they basically uh, uh, take some of the popular hashtags and uh, some of the like local hashtags and just try to promote local political events on uh, hashtags of uh, global, political, gl global events. political events. And that's just an illustration of like other bots that were following the same person or like retweeting the same person. You can see that they basically 
retweet more or less the same tweets, but in different order. So I believe it, there is probably a media company that controls all, all of these accounts, and they just like, uh, uh, they, they have orders from different customers on retweeting particular posts, and they just uh, randomize and like retweet them. And uh, uh, what we found when, when we were poking around, we were like, hey, uh, there is a German election that is coming. Let's see if we can find anything, any interesting examples in Germany. And we found this person who poses himself as the media person. Uh, there is actually an interview of he, with him uh, in German where he says that uh, he's a media, like social media expert, blah, 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 and he has his own infrastructure to run the social media campaigns. But we realized he just, has a bunch of uh, Twitter bots, and every time he posts stuff, he, he uses his Twitter bot uh, group to promote his tweets. And what you, and, uh, or I think he actually buys it from like other companies because the same Twitter bots that retweet his tweets also retweet like some pornographic content and like <laughs> what's not. So uh, and if you look at so uh, we we took like. Uh, just one hour visualization of like German speaking uh, tweets. And if you see, this guy basically st stands out. Like you can see like people talking to each other and retweet each other and there is like normal communication going on. And then you can see this guy and just like bunch of bots like retweeting his stuff. So um, Manchester bombing event, like we also took a slice like of what was going on within the first uh, hour and we call it by language. So uh, I think, uh, uh, like dark blue one is uh, English. This is Portuguese because there was a, the reason I think why there was a, a significant number of people retweeting uh, in Portuguese because there was one of the Portuguese like popular stars that commented on on the bombing. And then you can see uh, like other languages. I think maybe that's Spanish. I'm not. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, Spanish and Portuguese. And what what is interesting that for uh, all this. Uh, buckets of like uh, retweets that, and we group them also by, by time. So if, if the time is close between, between the retweets, then we will put the nodes together. And what you will notice that uh, uh, a lot of like uh, high level political uh, like figures on Twitter, uh, they have a number of followers, which I think are just automated bots that like whenever like James Police like tweet stuff, they would just like retweet. Uh, CNN, BBC, and if you start zooming in, you can also find like failed uh, pro promo campaigns. So someone uh, got their bots to start. So if, if it's part of the bigger cloud, that means that they use the bots to retweet some stuff. And then there are regular users who start retweeting stuff that was retweeted by bots because it got popular, it got into high popularity list. But if you see into the, if you start zooming into the clouds, which kind of stand on the side, like, like those ones, you, you will notice that this is basically a failed uh, social media uh, promotion campaign. And uh, this is just like one of the examples. There is a, a Twitter account called Jimmy Fans, and he has a bunch of people like retweeting, like who was retweeting his post on uh, Manchester bombing. And if you look into these accounts, all of them, they, they look a bit dodgy. Like some of them are already blocked by Twitter, some of them are not. Uh, they, like many of those accounts, they, they don't have like any tweets. Some of them have like small amount of tweets, but like maybe in Arabic. Uh, and I think, honestly, I think these accounts all belong to some media company. They just like bots, which are being controlled by a media company. And you can see Vitaly again. And, and you can see hmm. if he, so our friend Vitaly also appeared in this campaign. And he also like was, was his, uh, his friends. So that's him, that's his uh, uh, bot group. So NFL and Take a Knee, uh, more or less similar stuff. You'll, you'll see like, uh, I think uh, some of the media uh, people in the US, but it's, it's more or less the same thing. They, they have, they have uh, their own like uh, bot groups and uh, who, who just retweet whatever they say in, on NFL. So they basically, they just, I think they, if you look in Twitter as a information waves, they just write on this, on that information wave, uh, so uh, trying to promote their, their social persona. 
just example of uh, another similar actor and his 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 bot friends. And uh, if you start looking into these bots, they all look more or less the same. So I think some of the bots they might belong to the same company, and that's how like if you uh, and they also being outsourced, for example, by pro Twitter uh, or pro, pro Trump uh, groups to like retweet the Trump support images. So it, it's really interesting that the same person who who is uh, retweeting anti-Trump messages, he is also like retweeting pro-Trump messages. But what in fact that is, this is basically a Twitter bot and they just serve different customers. Just more examples like of uh, Twitter bots. And I think Twitter has hard time uh, dealing with this because even though they know this is a Twitter bot, but this Twitter bot, uh, is controlled by a real human, and real human is trying to make it more like a human thing. So if they block it, I think they would get a lot of complaints. And also, it's a, like a gray area if you start blocking anything that is similar. Yeah, I think we're almost done. Uh, sorry, we're eating in, into your, uh, but there is a free lunch, right? So uh, <laughs> um, just another. Yeah, no I think such thing as a free lunch. One, one of the bots, he was actually saying that he's, he's not a Russian bot. I think that was a hilarious finding. So I think with this we probably done. Uh, we wrote like a paper on this. Uh, there is a couple of other like uh, things that you can read if you're interested. So with this we open for questions or questions at lunchtime. Yeah, or, or questions lunchtime. <laughs> and thanks a lot. <laughs>